In the fall of 1862, Abraham Lincoln struggled to find a general who would deliver a decisive blow to the Confederacy. The capability of Southern forces had been demonstrated by incursions into Maryland and Kentucky, and the faint-heartedness of George McClellan after the Battle of Appomattox was giving the president cause to lose hope in his military leaders. Now, on November 7th, Lincoln appointed Ambrose Burnside as McClellan's successor. Burnside had a reputation as an affable leader, and as a corps commander, he'd proven himself earlier in the year in his North Carolina campaign. However, by Burnside's own admissions, he was not an ideal leader for commanding the entire Army of the Potomac. Despite his strong reservations for taking this position, Burnside relented when he discovered that if he didn't take it, the generalship would go to his old rival, Joseph Hooker. So taking the offensive, Burnside came up with a scheme to move federal troops to Fredericksburg, Virginia. From there, he could cross the Rappahannock River, and he felt that if he attempted a feint further to the west, Lee's army would be distracted, and he could then move directly south along the Richmond, Fredericksburg, and Alexandria Railway towards the Confederate capital of Richmond, without having to encounter Lee's army. Burnside's notorious bad luck plagued him from the start. The pontoon bridges that he had requested to help cross the Rappahannock failed to arrive. Further, he struggled to get his army to move quickly towards Fredericksburg, giving Robert E. Lee adequate time to move his forces to the south side of the river. Lee then had several weeks to fortify his troops on a ridge known as Marie's Heights, just west of town, and he placed further troops downstream to prevent Burnside from crossing at other points and potentially flanking Lee's troops. In retrospect, Lee didn't need to worry about Burnside making a flank attack. The unimaginative Union general had already determined that a direct assault on an entrenched position was so novel that the rebels would never see it coming. Nearly a month after the beginning of the campaign, Union engineers finally began to assemble six pontoon bridges before dawn on December 11th. Coming under fire from Confederate sharpshooters who had taken up positions in buildings within the town of Fredericksburg, the engineers' work was slow and dangerous. Burnside was forced to make an amphibious attack across the Rappahannock using small boats, and this devolved into street battles as the Federals rooted out the rebel snipers. In what would be the first urban battle in U.S. history, Union gunners followed this with a bombardment of the town and the ridgeline to the west. And despite this devastation, there were only four civilian deaths that resulted from this attack. By the evening of the 12th, Burnside had a majority of his troops across the river and moved into Fredericksburg, and he made the decision to attack the next morning. Now, the morning of the 13th began cold and overcast, with a dense fog obscuring the battlefield. As expected, the Union generals were met with vague and confusing orders from Burnside, which complicated any sort of coordinated federal action. By 8.30, Meade and Gibbon's divisions were moving against the Confederate positions arrayed on Prospect Hill, southeast of Fredericksburg. Artillery batteries from both sides pounded each other, while the Union army slowly pushed southward. By 1 p.m., the Union troops had reached the Confederate troops, and fire combat gave way to melee. The Confederate line began to break in its center before reserves were brought in to force the Federal troops back. Now, the coordination of Union command, as well as conflicts between division generals, furthered the chaos of the situation, and eventually the clumsy Union advance began to retreat. Confederate forces, under Jubal Early, began a counterattack, but they were met with Union artillery batteries firing close-range canister shot into their ranks. Burnside's attempts to rally his disordered left flank failed, and as dusk began to fall, fighting south of town died away. Now, while all of this had been occurring, another bloody fight was being waged at Murray's Heights, just west of Fredericksburg. That morning, Burnside had ordered troops in the fog-shrouded town to move out and capture the hillside. Now, the terrain was mostly fields, houses, fences, and gardens, and this hindered the formation of a cohesive skirmish line, and thus the Union forces had to approach the Confederate entrenchments in kind of a piecemeal fashion. A mill race that ran west of the town, crossed by only three bridges, also funneled Union forces into columns as they crossed this obstacle, and they were up against Confederates that had dug themselves in along Telegraph Road, which was protected with a four-foot stone wall and fortified with log breastworks. When the Union troops finally got within a hundred yards of Telegraph Road, they were met with repeated rifle volleys, and the resulting Federal casualty rates were horrifically high as they attempted to approach the Confederate entrenchments. As would be repeated in the First World War, Burnside responded to this debacle by throwing more men into the fray, only to see them mowed down. By the end of the day, seven Union divisions had been sent up against Marie's Heights, 
generally a single brigade at a time, for a total of 14 charges. This had cost them about 7,000 casualties, while the Confederates had suffered about 1,200 casualties. Unfortunately, Burnside attempted to pass the day's losses off entirely on his subordinates, but they argued that he was solely responsible for the carnage of that day. Because of the threat of Confederate sharpshooters, Union wounded were left on the battlefield throughout the cold December night, where they cried out for aid. And as the next day dawned, Burnside asked Lee for a truce to gather these dead and wounded from the battlefield. On the 15th, Federal troops withdrew back across the Rappahannock, bringing the Battle of Fredericksburg to an end. Burnside's failure at Fredericksburg cost the Union 1,285 killed, 9,600 wounded, and 1,769 missing. Confederate forces lost 608 killed, 4,116 wounded, and 653 missing. Now, the battle ended up being a political blow to Lincoln, and it led to a further erosion of Union morale. Of course, Burnside was sacked as commander of the Army of the Potomac. Unfortunately, he was transferred to command another unit and would follow up the fiasco of Fredericksburg with the debacle at the Battle of the Crater two years later. A few fun facts about Ambrose Burnside, beside the obvious sideburns thing. Now, as a young officer before the Civil War, Burnside was engaged to Charlotte Lottie Moon, who left him at the altar. When the minister asked if she took him as her husband, Moon is said to have shouted, No siree, Bob, before running out of the church. And Moon is best known for her espionage for the Confederacy during the Civil War. Later, Burnside arrested her, her sister, and her mother, and he kept them under house arrest, but he never filed charges. In 1849, while he was serving in the New Mexico territories, Burnside took an arrow to the neck fighting the Apaches near Las Vegas, New Mexico. Also, he developed a patented repeating rifle in 1855. He was awarded with a contract from the Army to produce the rifle and set up several factors to do just that. However, another rifle manufacturer bribed the Secretary of War to break the contract, which left Burnside financially ruined. After the war, he became the National Rifle Association's first president, and he also served as a mediator between France and Germany during the Franco-Prussian War. At the end of his life, he resided in Rhode Island, and he was buried at Swan Point Cemetery. Interestingly, horror novelist H.P. Lovecraft is buried only a couple of hundred feet away from Burnside's final resting place. Fredericksburg, The Union Repulsed, December 13, 1862. It was published by SPI Games. It was designed by Joe Agnalillo. I hope I get that right. And it was produced in 1975. Uh, it became part of the uh, Blue and Gray 2 for Civil War Battle Quad games, and probably one of the better games from that quad. Anyway, I've gone over the rules for the uh, Blue and Gray games before. In the description of the video, I've referenced the Battle of Shiloh video that I did a few years back. Uh, check that out if you want to go over the basic rules for this gaming system. You can also go over the Napoleon at Waterloo rules. Again, they're pretty simple rules, pretty easy to pick up. Now, like all the other games in the Blue and Gray quads, there's a number of specific rules to this game. First thing to note, there are 11 turns in the game. Now, during turns 1 and 7, there are fog rules. And during this time, artillery cannot bombard, and all movements are halved. Now, in my version of these games, I always say that cav can normally move at 8, infantry can move at 6, and artillery at 4. So during the uh, fog turns, the cab would move at 4, the infantry at 3, and the artillery at 2. Also, there are night turns where units can freely move, but they can't enter the zones of control of enemy units, and they can't fight. Now, reinforcements are brought into the map on specific map hexes during specific turns. And if that hex is blocked by an enemy, then those units can't come in until the hex is unblocked. Now, Union reinforcements come in on hex 0113 on turn 6, and the Rebel reinforcements come in on Hex 1901 on Turn 1 and 2501 on Turn 2 and 3. Also, there's these pontoons, and unlike ferries, uh, they only cost one movement point to cross. Now, the Confederates start the game uh, fortified in these readouts. The readouts have a smooth side and a barbed side. So if the friendly units are on the smooth side, the enemy unit will be on the barbed side. And if the unit's on the smooth side and protected they gain a bonus where their strength is tripled. However, this only occurs if they're being attacked from directly across the barb sides. So the readouts can be flanked, at which point attacks would be normal. Now to simulate Burnside's lackluster leadership, the game rules allow the Union player to move only 15 units per turn. Now there are rules written for Union units east of the river saying they can't move until a number of conditions are met. And honestly, with the 15 unit limit, the Union has a hard enough time, so I generally ignore these rules. 
Now in this gaming system, there's a somewhat complex scheme for gaining victory points for getting specific types of units off the map on specific hexes. Now honestly, after playing this with and without these rules, I don't think that these additional rules really are worth the time and effort they take for the casual game player. And so I don't play with them. I do play with the one victory point for every enemy combat unit eliminated, and also for controlling hexes. Now either player gets 15 victory points for occupying hex 1113, 25 victory points are gained for either player occupying hex 2401, 8 for the union player occupying 1711, 8 for the rebels occupying 0206, and 5 each for the rebels occupying 1504 and 0511. And that's basically it. As I may have mentioned, this game is pretty easy for the Confederates. However, the Union Army has a pretty tough go of it. Federal troops lined up along the Rappahannock River. And we've got Hayden up here as, as Burnside at his headquarters. I've got a little flag there. If the Confederates were to take that for some reason, they would get a bunch of points. Uh, I've never played this and had that happen. I made a little, with my snipping tool, I made a little combat results table. I am learning to really like the basic combat results table over either the newer one or the, uh, was it the attack effectiveness charts? I honestly don't think those add a lot to the game. I've played this numerous times and just cannot figure out why people think those are so great. So I'm not big on them, but you can play however you like. Okay, the rebels are basically just going to have to, they have a boring time ahead of them. They're just going to have to hold their position. It's going to be up to the uh, Union units to win or lose this game. So we're going to go ahead and start here. And I am just going to move everybody into a readout. Um, artillery is kind of hard because I don't think they're going to be able to shoot over these. Uh, they can't shoot over these hillsides, which is a problem. But we can go one, two. I'm going to move them into position at least. Um, going to kind of move everybody around. I think I'm going to pull back into the woods here. And here and here. I guess we can stack these guys too. Nothing says we can't stack them. Um, one, two, three. Oh. One, two, three. He can only go three because it's. Oh, he can make it. He's got three there. Um, this guy can move here and here. And then one, two, three here. One, two, three. Remember, they only got. They only have a three they can move. Um, I don't think he's going to be able. He could go here onto the road. That'd be three, three, and one. I'm going to continue two, three. We're going to move him. I could fall back into these readouts. That's something I could do. Um, this guy's a little too exposed out here. I think that's about all I'm going to do. This guy moved one. I'm going to move him up instead. I don't think, I don't like that position there. Okay, that is going to be, oh, and then this guy comes in. Where did we say he came in? I thought he came in over here at 2501. Uh, let's check it out here real quick. I got a reinforcements, Union Rebel reinforcements, 1901. Okay. So that, what happened to that guy? Oh, 1901. Where the heck is 1901? 12, 13, 15. Oh, he's right here. Not a great place to come in. Okay, but we can move him to... There we go. And that is the uh, Confederate turn one. We'll go to the Union. I can move 15 units. Um, I think what I'm going to try to do is get these guys to go north. I think I will try to split the forces. I'm not sure I really want to go against uh, Marie's Heights here. I think I'd rather flank it. So we're going to try to keep that. Three, one, two, three. That's two. 
Um, I need a big unit. Where's my big units? Okay, there's my 15. One, two, three. There's three. Okay, uh, one, two, three. We're going to try to take that guy. And then, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Eight, nine, ten. I think I moved ten. I got five more I can move. Um, I should move Burnside up. Get him into the battle. That would be unlike him, but... There's twelve, I think. Hmm. 13, 14, and I think I've got one more. Okay, we'll say that's good. So we've got two little attacks here. Um, I need to bring in artillery, too. So I've got artillery here. He's going to have a long time to get there. He's going to be a long time getting there. Him and him and him, boy. Okay, bringing those artillery in on time is going to be hard. Let's go ahead and attack. And I've got 11 to 1. Should be an easy attack with the 2, and that's going to eliminate him. And we will just put this guy over here. And then, am I going to advance? Yeah, I think I will. That'll pin that guy down. Okay, and then here we've got a 9 to 10. So 1 to 2. We sure don't want to go straight across that readout. So readout, readout, not a readout, but a readout with a 3. So 1 to 2 with a 3 is a attacker retreat. We'll move there. Okay. Fog turn ends. These guys come in. And and we always count that coming in as 1. Let's go ahead and see what we can do with our Confederate units. I like staying there. Well, let them come. I think we will move those guys backwards. And then he can fire. Um, one, two, three. Now, I said they got six. Four, five, six. Okay. Okay. This guy, I think we're going to use these for fallbacks. So we're going to go one, two, three, four, five. And one, two, three. He's going to go here. And then we're going to bring this 20 in. And then. Actually, I think I'm going to go one, two, three, four, five, six, six, and then we'll go parallel in case we need to um, we'll go parallel on this road in case we need to add more defense to these guys here. Okay. Um I don't know what would happen if we pushed against the Confederates, actually, or the, the Union, because the issue is, is the Union Army has some pretty big units here. They're a lot bigger than the Confederate ones. I think the Confederates would get pretty much chopped to pieces, but we're going to stay put. Everybody else has moved, so we only have one attack here, and it's easily going to be, I think, 6 to 1. There's 11, maybe not, 23 to 11... Uh, 23 and 9 is 32 to 11, and then this guy's going to shoot. 
I don't think he can do that. I don't think he can shoot between the units. I think the units would block him. Oh, wait, he can bombard. That's right, he can go pew. So 33, That actually that one's kind of helpful because that gives it right to 3 to 1 odds. So we roll a 1 with 3 to 1. Not good. Defender eliminated. So there just goes that Union units. I will not... Yeah, I will. We will just move right into that because we are strong enough to do that. Okay. Player turn. The Union gets to go. We're going to continue to try to fight over here. Um, can't travel across the canal here, I don't think. Uh, I think those are blocked. Yeah, I guess. So we will go... There's one and two. Three. Actually, I'm going to move this guy here. One, two, three, four, five, six. There, that guy can go there. Um, gosh, they, yeah, you can see where the uh, Union ran into problems with this canal because there's only three places across the river they can go, or across these streams. Um, that's four units. We'll go one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, and that's six units. Um, there's seven. Eight, nine, and one, two, three, four, ten, eleven. We'll put the put the Ah, get off there. Put the artillery on top. 12, 13, and then... Um, 14, 15, okay. And there's our union. Okay, let's go ahead and run through some. 10 to 15. So 1 to 2 with a 6 is an AE. So basically those guys are eliminated. And then here we've got a um, 23 to 15. 1 to 1 with a 2. And that's defender retreat, which we need. So we will storm the readout. Um, here nobody, we can't cannonade, here nothing. Okay, now we got this 20. So I've got 9 and 10, 11, 12. Oh gosh, we should not have attacked that guy. 12 to 33. So 1 to 3 odds with a 1. That's a defender retreat. Okay. Don't think I will attack him. I don't want to get stuck with those guys. Okay, here we've got 8 and 8 is 16. But we've got a guy sneaking around the flank. So 16 is... Um, 16 and 12 is 28. And 7 is 35 to 10. 3 to 1 odds with a 6 is an exchange. So basically we take off 10. Now these guys have got to take... 10. Uh, I think the 12 is going to be the one that we're going to have to lose, sadly. But we can move in as an attacker. Okay. And that is the end of round uh, 2. We go to round 3. Uh, let's see. They... Let's change our player turn. 
round three confederates i'm not sure whether we should try to flank that guy or not one two three four five six okay we're gonna go here and i am gonna move this guy here one oh i can't because well i can there we go and then I think we can move that guy there and I think he could be I think that's a suitable bombard there um, we will move up that guy there 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 Okay, one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, and then these guys will split one. Oh, let's go here. Three, four, five, six. And then one, two, three, four, five, six. We can. You know what I'm going to do? I'm, this guy's going to move here instead. And then one, two, three, four, five, six. And that guy there. Okay. There's our Confederate move. Um, this guy will move here and support here. And I think that's it for the uh, Confederate move. We're going to at least try to keep the federal troops suppressed down here on the bottom. So let's start with this one here. We've got a nine, and then against them we have a 33, 34 to nine. So that's gonna be a three to one odds. And not, that's not what I wanted. Three to one and a three. Defender retreats. We'll move that. Um, I'm gonna keep him stuck. I'm gonna keep, keep him stuck. Okay, here we've got a nine and 11. So 22, 16, one to one odds with a six. Oh, well, that's not so good. Um, we'll move here and here and we'll stay put there. Okay, up here we've got a eight and nine, two to one odds with a two. Defender retreats. We'll stick him back here and we will move into that square. Okay, we go to the uh, Union moving. I think we'll move this guy here. One, two. Um, three, four, five, six. Actually, we're going to hold him here and we're going to move these two. That's five, six. Um, seven, eight. We really need to get those flanks suppressed. Nine, ten, eleven. Okay. 12, 13, 14, and 15. Okay, I think that's going to be it. And like I say, I ignored the rules of the eastern, the, these units on the eastern side of the Rappahannock can move, cannot move. Um, again, I think the Union's going to have a hard time, but let's see. It at least evens up the game a little bit. Okay, so we've got an attack here at 15 and 8 and 6. So we've got 6, 12, 13, 14, and 15. 29 to 15. So 1 to 1 odds with a 4. Attacker retreats. Okay. Down here we've got 
five and 15, so 20 to 21. One to one odds with a three. Defender retreat, so we can move him in. Okay, here we've got a 21 uh, to 27. So one to one odds with a four. Attacker retreats. Um, here we've got a seven. Oh, we could have moved that guy. Anyway, seven and nine is 16. And eight is 24. And 11 is 35 to 33. So one to one odds there with a three. Oh, well, that's something because this guy can't... Uh, he can't go back into a uh, another hex, so that hurt the Confederates. We will move there. And is that it? That's it. Okay. We flip our turn marker. We go here, bring in the Union up here. And now we're ready for the Confederates to move. We'll stay put here. Uh, I really want him to guard that flank up here. I think we can do this. Up, oh, we're overstacked there. So I'll just move a guy up here. That guy's just sitting there. Actually, I'm going to stay put down here because We're going to come back here. I think what we've got to do is keep this line together because we don't want to give this uh, place down here this this hex up. So things change when when we lost that major when we lost Early's units that kind of hurt. So we'll do that. Is there anybody that can fire? Nobody. Okay, right here. Um, I've got a seven, and a seven is a fourteen. A uh, 21, 26 to 15. So one to one odds with a six. Oh no, that's an attacker retreat. Um, I'll move up here. Do I want to move up there? I could take that. I'm not going to take that. I'm going to. That would get me. I could be surrounded pretty quickly there. So we're just going to stay put. Okay. The Union is repulsing them from uh, Marie's Heights. Let's see, down here, not much. Okay. We go to the uh, Union game turn. Uh, let's see, it's going to move this eight. One, two, three, four, five, six. Well, and we'll move this eight here. One, two, three, four. Five, six. I think I'm going to try to surround them here. That's two units that have moved. Um, I really need to try to get these guys from the heights. So let's see. One I can go there. I could go one. Don't can't go there. One, and that's three, four. Because I got can't go through that hex. Um, actually, I can. Let's go ahead and go through that hex. Uh, we will move this guy here. Okay, so that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Where's these ten gonna go? Um, We'll move here. No, we won't. I don't want to get flanked. Um, that's two to one odds there. I don't think we can shoot over that. Um, man. 
could go here. Man, I can't go here because this is 15 to 12. Well, that'd be one to one. I don't really want to fight with that odds. Uh, let's see if we can break through one more time. Okay, these guys are going to go... What did I get? One, two, three, four. No, he didn't move. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I got eight, nine, ten, eleven. I got four more to move. Twelve. Okay. I want to try to get that guy out. So we'll start here. That's a six to one. Easy. And we get a six to one with the sixes. And, oh, well, that hurt. Exchange. God, I hate exchanges. Uh, we will move into position here, though. Well, no. Okay. Nine to one to three odds with a one. One to three with a one. It's a defender retreat. Well, came out better than I thought. Okay, we've got 7, 21 to 28, 1 to 2 with a 5 as an AR. They go back again. Over here, nothing. These guys can't. Here I've got a 12 to 9, 1 to 1 with a 2. That's what we did need. Okay, there we go with that. And then I've got a 15 with an 8 is a 23 and 6 is 29 to 15. Oh, just one short of a 2 to 1 odds. 1 to 1 with a 6. Well, that didn't do us any good. Okay. And that is the Union turn. We go to the next Confederate turn. Uh, Confederate's going to stay put. Don't want him flanking. Here... I'm going to risk it. I'm going to put here, here, here. Um, we'll fight against that guy there. And two, three, four, five, six. here comes some relief. Now down here, Stay put there, stay put there, stay put there. We could do, uh, yeah, this guy's just going to move down. I think we'll stay put there. Okay, there, now the Confederates will go. First of all, we'll attack here at the 6. So we've got 12, 15, 16, 22 to 12. 1 to 1 odds with a 3 as a defender retreat. And we will send him packing again. Okay, and then down here we have a 7. Wait, wait, got 7, 14, 19, and 4. 23 to 15, 1 to 1 odds with a 1. Well, that was 1 to 1 with a 1 is a defender retreat. Now, he can't go there. He can't go there. He's going to have to retreat and push those guys back. And we will push these guys. Actually, yeah, we'll push them back into position here. I think we'll push him into position because we could try to move around. We could try a flank attack, but... Okay, down here, we've got a 11 and 9. We'll go ahead and try to get this guy uprooted, but this is 11 to 9. 1 to 1 odds with a 3. Well, that sends him going here. And then here we have a 9 and a 10. So... 19 to 6, 3 to 1 odds with a 1. Defender eliminated. Okay. 
and definitely moving this guy into position. Okay, Union gets to go. Two, three, four, five, six. And we will try this again. One, two, three, four, five, six. That's two, three, four. Down here. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, we're gonna try a flank attack here. One, two, three, We'll stay put there. I keep losing track. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. Okay. Now then, we'll start up here. I want to see if I can push this guy back, then I can squeeze that guy and get rid of him. So let's do that one first. Eight and fifteen is going to be a twenty-three plus six is twenty-nine to fifteen. One to one odds with a two. That's exactly what I want. So we're going to push that guy back and that guy there. And then this 8 is going to go against the 8. So 1 to 1. If I get a less than 3, I get a 1. That's exactly what I wanted to do. So we will move him in place. I think that will cause the uh, rebels to crumble on their left flank. Or we can just slowly move down it here. Um, here we've got a 15 and... 2, 17, 2, 1 to 1 odds with a 6. Okay, that pushed him back. Um, okay, here we've got a 7 and 4. Oh, I can't move there. I'll move him there. Okay, 7 and 6. So that's 6 and 6 is 12. 13 and 14 is tw 28. To nine. Oh, wait, no. 28 to 9, 18, 27. So one to one with a five. Pushes them back again. Okay, and then a nine, uh, eight, sixteen to nine. One to one with a two. Pushes him back. And yeah, I will go right here. Um, hopefully, well, that's pretty dangerous. Not a risk I want to take. Okay, here we've got a 9 and a 3. 10, 11, 12, 2, 10. So 1 to 1 with a 3. Pushes him back. Can't really, no, nah, it's not a good place to move into. And then a 7 to 11. 33. 7 to 33. Oh, shoot, that's like five to one odds. One to five odds. Okay, one. Yeah, that's easily... Wait, a one is an attacker retreat. Well, he lucked out. Okay, and that is going to be the Union move. We go to night phase. Confederate's going to move during the night. Um, I think I'll push myself back here and use these for defense. Um... I can't get in enemy zones of control. I've got to be careful there. I do think I'll move this guy here. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, and that guy's in good shape. Um, He's in pretty good shape there. Those guys are in pretty good shape there. Okay, that's be the Confederate move. Okay, Union. 
I think the big thing is to get two, three, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, now six. Okay. Moving here and here. That's my two guys. I'm not going to move him. There's one guy to move. And then these guys will move around. Two, three. Need some support here. Four, five. Um, six. Seven. Eight, ten, hmm, everybody's bunched up there, ten, eleven, twelve, 13, 14, 15. Okay. Let's see how it goes. Okay, that's it. Now we go to fog turn. So everybody moves at half turn. Now I'm not sure why you can move at full during the night, but then the fog, I guess the fog's in the morning, so. Confederate movement. One, Four, five, we'll go there. Um, Those guys will stay put. Um, one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. And up here, I think what we'll do is we're going to go here and here. We're going to do an all-out uh, assault against these guys. Now, I don't think, I don't know if he could fire down the ridge or not. That's hard to say. Okay, the Confederates are going to assault with Dawn. Um, let's start up here. I don't think we're going to do anything. Okay, here we've got a seven. And this guy's going to move around here. He can do that. Okay, so seven. And then two and ten. So seven and twelve is nineteen to six. Three to one odds with a five. Defender retreat. Okay. Um, I'm not going to go into that, that, uh, hex. Well, if I do, I pin him. Okay, yeah, we can do it, because I can flank him. Okay, down here, we've got a 7, and 7 is 14 to 12. 1 to 1 with a 1, so that sends him back, which is okay. I got a 9 to five. One to one with a three sends him back. Fifteen and then this is uh, one to two odds with a two. 
Um, sends him back. Okay, here we've got our nine. And eight is a uh, 17. And eight, 25 to 14. So one to one with a one. Well, that's what we wanted. That eliminates him because he can't retreat. I will move in. Okay. Nine to seven. One to one with a three. Sends him back. And then here we've got a nine and an eight. Two to one odds with a two. Defender retreat and stay put. Finally, we've got a 13 and 10. 23 to 9. 2 to 1 odds with a 4. Defender retreats. Okay. And that is going to be the end of the uh, Rebel turn. We go with the uh, Union turn. Well, hmm. Can't. I would say we could flank this guy, but we can't because there's these streams in the way. We need to move. Um, I don't know if I can cross a stream. I don't remember whether those actually work for that. Now, oh, I can do this here. Um, the question is, can you attack across streams? And I don't think you can. Let's go back to the PDF here. Um, blue and gray. Let's look at our combat results trio. Um, let's see, those are River hexes, forest hexes, bridge, creeks may only attack across bridges. Okay, so that's our that's the answer. We can't we can't attack across those. So unfortunately those guys are stuck. So one, two. Let's see, I moved those. Did I move those guys? I don't remember. Got those. Three, four. Five, six. Oh. Seven, eight. Nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, and fifteen. Okay. We need a breakthrough here. Okay, so we've got two, really two sites of battle here. So here we've got six and 15 is 21, 29 to 10. So two to one odds with a six as an attacker retreat. Okay. Then we've got here eight, 16 to um, nine, but he's doubled because he's on rough terrain. So. 16 to 18, 1 to 2, with a 1. Sends him back. Here we've got 12. However, these guys are tripled. So 12 to 21, 22, 23. 1 to 2 odds with a 1. Well, pushes him back, pushes him back, and we will take the heights there. Here we've got a 8. And 10 to 9. So 1 to 1 with a 6. Sends him back. 15. Okay, 1 to 1 with a 1. Sends him back. I'll take it. And then down here. We're going to put everything on this guy as much as possible. So this guy's a 13 to 9, 1 to 1 with a 6. Oh no, he's back, sent back. 
So that ruined that plan. Okay. Uh, 14 and 8. 22 to 9. 18, 27. 1 to 2 with a 2. 1 to 2 with a 2. DR. Oh, well. Didn't go so bad. And that's it for the Union. Okay. Did I? I may over move some guys because it was a fog turn. I forgot. Okay. Let's go back to Confederates. This time, we are going to move the Rebs. I think what we're going to do here... One, two, three, four, five. Oh, I can't move out of here. There. I'm going to try to take those cannons out. Um... Keep him here and keep that cannon there. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Um, one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. Move that there. And. Oh, wait. Six. Hey, you know what? We're going to move that guy there and those guys there. Hold the line here. And move this guy back over here. That's not enough. We'll stay put. Okay. 10 to 4. Cross a bridge. I think the bridge doubles. Let's see here. Bridges. Bridges, bridges, bridges. Where are you at, bridge? Defender doubled. Okay. So we have this guy here is at 6, 12. And then we've got 10, 11, 12, 13. 13, 14, 15, 1 to 1 odds at a 1. So that sends him packing and we will go across the bridge. Now, yeah, we'll gain that. We leaves us a little vulnerable, but that's okay. 9 to 16, 1 to 3, 2. Attacker retreats. Okay, and I will uh, stay put. Here we've got a 7, and 4 is 11 to 12. 1 to 2 with a 4. Attacker retreats. And down here we've got a 12, and 9 is 21, and 8, 28 to 15. 1 to 1 still. 3. One to one with a three is a DR, but he has no place to go but out. Okay, down here. Nine. Nine. And eight. So 18 and eight, 26 to 14. Barely. One to four. Or one to one with a four. Attacker retreats. Well, shoot. I won't move into anything there. Nothing there. Okay, so that's the uh, Confederate move. Move to the Union. Get rid of our moves. Um, I'm going to think I'm going to try to get rid of that 10. I think we can bring him down. So that's 2. Okay. Three. Four. Five. Oh, four, five. Six, seven, eight, nine, 
10, 11, 12, 13, 14, and 15. Okay. So we start here with a 15, with an 8, 23, 29, and 6 is 35 to 10. So 3 to 1 odds with a 4. That's what I need. So there goes that guy. Okay, here we've got an 8 to 5. 1 to 1 with a 1. Um, oh, he can go here. That's the space I want. Okay, and then 8 to 4. Uh, this is doubled though. So 1 to 1 with a 3. Hmm, this is a problem. He can go into uh, eight to one, one to one with a three. This guy's eliminated because he doesn't have anywhere to fall back on. Okay. 12 to seven, one to one with a one, moves him back. And then down here, I think that the Confederates are actually might have a chance of losing this. 14. And um, eight and one. 14 and nine is 23 to nine. Nine, 18. Okay, we're gonna, let's see. 23 to nine. We're just gonna stick with one to one odds here. So seven and 14, one to one at six. Okay. I know that didn't help. Okay, then this guy's going to fight here with a uh, 6 and 6 is 12, 13, 14 to 9, 1 to 1 with a 1. Well, that moves him here. Don't think I'll move into that. And then 8 and 8 to 8, 2 to 1 moves him back, and we will move in there. I should have moved, but that's okay. End of turn. Okay, we go to the next Confederate turn, turn nine. Three more turns left in the game. Confederates are gonna fall back. Here, here, here. Um, one, two, three, four, five, six. Charge. Stay put. Well, that's a five. How many points does he have? Nine. Okay. Nine, ten, eleven, twelve, and five is seventeen to five. That'd be three to one odds. Let's take it. Two, three, four, five, six. Okay, that guy's in pretty good shape here. He's in pretty good shape. We're going to move. We'll stay there. Okay. Five and seven. Five, ten, twelve. And nine is 21, 22, and six is 28 to 12. Two to one odds with a two. Okay, that's going to break the back of the Union there, I think, in the north. Okay, and then down here, we'll go ahead and take the uh, five, 12 to... Eight, one to one with a two. That's exactly what I wanted. Yes, we'll move into that. Nine and eight is 
uh, nine and eight is a 17 to five, three to one odds with a three. That's what I want. So encircled down here, we have a, let's get that out of the way. Nine, 12, 17 to five, three to one odds with a four defender retreat. Oh, he can't retreat back across the stream. He doesn't have anywhere to go. He's gone. Uh, we will. I'll stay put there. Okay. Here we've got a nine to thirteen. One to two with a six. That's a attacker retreat. And finally, we've got a eight to sixteen. One to two odds with a five attacker retreat. Yes, I'll move into that hex. And that is it for the. Um, Rebels, we go with the uh, Federals. Uh, let's see, we've got plenty of room over here. One, two, three, four. Here, here. That's one, two, three, four. Two, three, four. Okay, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Nine. Okay. Ah, these guys are kind of trapped. Those aren't very much. Okay. Now, what was I at? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Okay, I think we're, that's going to break through there. Uh, 6. Now, since we're fighting behind the lines, we don't, they don't get, the rebels don't get that Oh, wait, this guy has to fight. Okay, yeah, we can do that. Okay, so we got 8, 16, and 15 is 31, 37, and 6 is 43 to 5. Okay, easily 6 to 1 odds. And we get a 1, and that eliminates that battery. Okay, then this 8 is going to go against a 7, 1 to 1 with a 4, sends him backwards, and then 4, 8 to 7, 14, 21. 8 to 21 is going to be 1 to 3 odds with a 1. Oh, 1 to 3 with a 1. Defender retreats. Okay. And we've won that. Okay, Confederates go here. Uh, 14, 21, 27, and 8 is a 35 to 9. 3 to 1. 3 to 1 with a 3. Sends this guy back again. 16. And 16 and 9 and 8. 17, 1 to 2 with a 1. Both those guys have to go back. Okay. And that's the Union turn. We go to the Confederate turn. This could be interesting. So the Confederates have to push the Union army out here. And the Union have it, do actually have claimed that area. Okay. Um, I think we need to get back to our center. So first of all, we'll go across here, and then we'll go one, two, three, four, five there. We gotta get rid of that guy. Now this guy's gonna go one, two, three, four, five, and then one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, five. We've got to defend this place. Uh, down here, we don't have much. I'll 
I'll stay put. I'm going to move him back. This guy. Move him around. Okay. We're good. Okay. Seven, two. No, let's start here. I got nine. And seven is 16 and five, 21. 22, 28 to 8, 3 to 1 odds with a 3, and since he, he is now gone, and then we've got 9 to 23, uh, 9 to 23, 9 to 23, 1 to 3, with a 1, 1 to 3 with a 1, defender retreat, well, there we go. We'll take it. And here we've got a seven to six, one to one with a one. Again, another retreat. And we will take, oh, wait, hold on. He's doubled. So that's six, 12. So we got seven to 12, one to two odds with a one. It'll still be a retreat. Okay, and he'll move in there. Down here, we've got a, 18 to 14. 1 to 1 with a 4. A 1 to 1 with a 4 is an attacker retreat. And here we've got a... He's in rough terrain, so he's doubled. 8 to 32. 1 to 4 with a 1 attacker retreat. Okay, well, that wasn't bad. So basically, the uh, Union is making advances, but they're doing so very slowly. Um, terrain is not their friend. Okay, there's one. Um, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Okay, there's our 15. Okay, let's start up here. Uh, we've got 6, 12, 13, 14, um, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20 against a 14. Okay. 20, 35, and eight is 43, 14 times two. I think that's going to be, we're going to do this at three to one odds. And we get a four. Okay, and then we're going to move this eight to Nine, that's tripled though. So nine times three is 27. Eight to 27 is gonna be like one to four odds. The one to four with a two. Attacker retreats, no surprise there. Okay, over here, we got a six, 12, 13 to nine. One to one at a three. Defender retreats, uh, I think I'll stay put. And then we've got a 14 and 8, 22, 23, 23, and 16, 39 to 9. Thirty-nine to nine. Let's see. So 
Four to one odds, okay? Four to one with a five. An exchange, okay? So the the uh, Confederates lost nine points. Ah. We'll probably have to lose those two. Okay, so we lost 14. And that is going to be... Now we go into game turn 11. Last turn of the game. So this will be it for... Well, see what the uh, Confederates can do. Um, I think we'll move... This area is pretty safe. So we're going to go... 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 1, 2, th 1, 2, 3... It's kind of a funny looking one, two, three, four, five, six, but that'll work. Uh, we'll go one, two, three, four. That's too far. One, two, three. Okay. Nine to eight, one to one odds. Can't hurt. Yeah, I don't think anybody can get around to that place. Okay. Don't think I got the odds there. Um, we'll take this here. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. It's doubled because he's in a, we'll move him here. That's a doubled. I think those guys are all going to be safe down here. Let's see here. Nope. And we'll soak him off. We'll use that to soak off some of that attack. Okay. Last thing for the Confederacy. Let's see how they do. First of all, we've got a... Twelve to... 14, but that's doubled, so 12 to 28, 1 to 3, with a 2. Attacker retreats. Nothing big there. We will stay put. We got 7, 8, and 16, 17, 2, oh gosh. 23 times 2 is 46. 17 to 46. My gosh. It's going to be like 1 to 3 odds with a 6. That's not good. Oh, gosh. That was a disaster. Okay. And um, this guy's going to go 9 to 8. 1 to 1 with a 2. So it sends him backwards. Okay, down here. Oh, I do have to attack. 8 to 13. 1 to 2 with a 6. Oh! This last round has been a disaster for the Confederates. Okay, 9 to 9. 1 to 1 with a 3. That's going to send him back. And then 10 to 7. 1 to 1 with a 1. That sends him back. And that is it. Oh, that is going to hurt. The Union, I think, has this wrapped up. So, And like I say, I like using the rules where you can move those guys. At least it makes it... It may be a little ahistorical, but I think it makes it a little fair. Okay, one, two... Can anybody move... Nobody can move there. I don't think they can get this position. Hold on. Nope, there's no way in there. Okay. Okay, those guys are going to fight there. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six. Seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. And I'm not gonna I'm not gonna try that. Okay. That's it. I think we're gonna go. That's all the union's gonna do at this time is so let's go ahead against this guy. Oh, that guy. We'll go there. And then I can fire. 
Okay, so we've got eight. He can't fire. Oh, okay, so eight and nine. So one to two with a five. This guy's going to move back. Here we're going to fire at... We're going to pour everything onto Kershaw and uh, Burkstall. So we've got six and 23 is 29. Uh, and 14 is th uh, 43 to 13. Three to one odds. We roll a six at three to one. Exchange, okay. Sends these guys packing. And so they have seven, five, 10, 11, 12. I think it's gonna be this guy, these two. Okay, and then down here we have the final one. Six, 12, 13. 13 and 16 is 29. 30, 38 to 38 to 9. 9, 18. It's going to be 1 to 1. And we get a 6. So it sends 1 to 1 at 6 sends these guys packing back. So that's about all they're going to do. Now, I don't think the readout... I may have been playing this wrong if the readout and the um, readout and the other terrain is additive. Let's just see here. Uh, redoubts, 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 redoubts. Triple. I think you just go with the better one of the three. So, And that's it. Now I'm going to... Let's go ahead and we'll figure up victory points. Okay, so points came out to be uh, 134 for the Union and 186 for the Confederacy. So it really wasn't even close, even with my little cheat for the Union. I do think, however, that uh, Union cheat could change it up so that a really good Union player with some really lucky rolls could actually win this. Um, the first time I played, I messed up severely and allowed all the Union players, or all the Union um, units to move. I didn't have the... 50, or the 15 unit limit, and they were actually able to win it. Uh, they've got some pretty big units that they can go in and break up the Confederate troops with, but uh, they are going to have a hard fight against the redoubts throughout the, uh, or the redoubts throughout the uh, map. Anyway, that's what I've got this week. I don't think it's a bad game. Like I say, I'd let a beginner play the Confederacy and a more experienced player play the Union if I were going to have two people sitting down and play in this. But for the blue and gray quads, I think it's probably up there with Antietam and Shiloh. Probably not quite as good as Chickamauga. But we'll keep playing these and see how they go, and we can probably rank them. Anyway, that's what I got this week. I appreciate you guys watching. Stay warm out there, and we will talk to you later. Bye-bye.